let's take a look at message filters. So message filters are actually only configurable from the CLI. You cannot configure them from the GUI. From the CLI, this is the command you got to run. It's filters, and you got all these options in here for creating the message filter, deleting the message filter, and all, all the other stuff. Now, in order to create a message filter, you can run the new command. It is not, it's not uh, case sensitive, and uh, therefore this also works. So not a problem. Now, um, filters, and if you want to check the filters that are already configured, run the list command. When you run the list command, it gives you the output of uh, the message filters that are already configured. Now, you have another good option available, which is the detail uh, option. When you run the detail option, it'll ask you which filter you want to check. So let's say I want to check uh, filter number one. I'd enter, and there you go. It gives me information about this message filter, as in, is it active or not? It, is it valid, number? And uh, what is it exactly doing? So this is how you write message filters. Well, I'm not necessarily talking about the structure has to be, it, the structure does not necessarily have to be in this way. Um, what do I mean by that? You don't really have to put the curly braces here and all that. Well, we're gonna uh, come to that after this. Well, this is how you write it. If you're good with programming, this is gonna be a piece of cake for you. Um, so let's say somebody comes up to you and asks you a question. Okay, and the question is, uh, this message filter right here, I have this message filter, it's not working, and this one is working fine. So what's the problem? And you see the ESA actually accepts both, uh, both of these uh, message filters. So what's really going on? Well, the difference would be that this message filter is not active, and this message filter is active. And when you see this exclamation mark right here, this means that it's not active. So if we go back to uh, the CLI of the ESA, we'll find this uh, particular part there. Let's take a look. Now, if you take a look at this, uh, let me run the filters command again. And let me say list. Uh, so we have two of them right there. So let's say we're gonna, uh, so in order to uh, make it inactive, we're gonna run the set command. So set, what? Um, Let's say number two or number one, no problem, as inactive. So if I do that now, and you see it's inactive, it's not active anymore. Now the other thing that we gotta check right now is when I got the output for this, you see right here, this was the output when I checked it before, right? You see this right here. Now, if I go ahead, and run the detail command on this. And this is for number one. There you go. Now this is the output. The only difference that you find is this. Apart from this, obviously, but let's say somebody came to you and just provided you this much. Well, you gotta know why is it not working because logically this looks correct. There's no problem. The, the conditions are fine. The, the action is fine. So the structure and the syntax is basically fine, but you gotta know that when you see an exclamation mark right here, this means it's inactive. Well, what does this exactly do? What, what does this, uh, this kind of message filter do? Let's check it out. Okay, so the message filter uh, can be written like this or in other ways as well. That's completely your choice. Uh, when we just saw this in the CLI, it looked like this, right? And it's not necessary to write it like this. You can actually write it like this. Okay, it's it's completely your choice. Well, there's something uh, with the writing of the message filters. One one important thing that you should know. Um, I'll let you know after this. So um, let's break this down. This is the name of the message filter, and you can keep it whatever you want. Although recommended is that you give it a name that kind of explains to you what this what that message filter does. So let's say. Um, this is uh, notifying. Notifying who? Um, it's it's not a big deal. You can keep it whatever you want. So the, the point is that you can name it whatever you want. This is just the name of the message filter followed by a colon. After that, we have the condition here. And if this condition meets, this is uh, the action that will be taken. Now, what is the condition? It says if RCPT-2, that is the recipient, if the envelope recipient contains test.com. 
why did I say contains? Because uh, if you want to say equals to exactly equal to, uh, well, that's going to be that's going to look something like this: the caret at the start and a dollar at the end. Although this won't make sense because um, any email won't look like this. This is not the correct uh, email address. It has to be something like something at test.com. All right, so you cannot use equals in this case. Obviously, that would be incorrect logically. So that's why we're using contains. So let's say any email that contains uh, ABC uh, at test.com or whatever at test.com, um, ABC at 1234test.com, MMM at the end, all of that's going to work because we're just saying if this text is found within any envelope recipient, this action has to be taken. All right, and what are you doing? You're notifying um, sboss at cisco.com. That's myself, and that's literally it. And you end it with a semicolon, uh, just like you do it in C programming. Now, you can actually write all of this in a single line, just like this. Um, let's say like this, and uh, there you go. That's it, literally. You can write it like this, but it's not readable. I mean, it's not, you know, you know uh, readable at all. It's not friendly. It's, it does not look good, right? Um, the uh, the other thing that you got to keep in mind is that um, the message filters actually end with a dot at the end, and you cannot keep this dot here. Okay, this is one of the only things that you got to keep in mind. When you write a message filter, you cannot keep the dot on the same line, and you have to end the message filter with a dot. So it's good to write it like this and make it look clean so that it's easier to understand. And that's it, once you're done, you copy this and you put it in the CLI and it looks uh, like it was uh, looking before, uh, like this, yeah? And uh, that's it, it would look literally like this and uh, the name would be notifying blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's not the point. Uh, okay, I'm gonna show it to you in an example of um, in the CLI above this dot that I mentioned, and let's take it forward. Let's see. Okay, here we are back at the CLI. Let's take a look at the filter. Now, okay, um, let's go ahead and do a new, and let's give it a name, notifying. Okay, so this is just the name of the message filter, as I mentioned before. Also, you notice it mentions enter dot on its own line to end. Well, this is what I was talking about. Now, notifying. Now, if I do a if, uh, let's say mail from this time, okay? Mail from contains, okay, fossil slide, gmail.com, and go ahead like this. And let's say we want to log an entry. Whenever an email comes in from fossil slide, gmail.com, log an entry saying that, hey, email from a boss. Go ahead and close that. You don't literally do stuff like that. I'm just showing you examples, okay? All right, all right. So we also want to notify, so which means we can have multiple actions inside one condition. So if this condition is fulfilled, go ahead and take these uh, both of these actions. And I want to notify who? I want to notify. Okay, yeah. Um, let's say Cisco.com. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and close it off. And that's it. Close the brace. Hit enter and dot. That's it. I hit enter. It's going to say one filter added, some blend at right here. One filter added. So this is how you literally uh, write your message filters. And then, you know, just end it with a dot. There you go. Now, if you want to check the list now, you see there's a third one in here, and which is active, active, right? And I want to check the details for this. And uh, number three, there you go. You see the format change, the syntax is, I mean, it's using the same thing, the curly brace just shifted here and all this stuff. I'm gonna show you uh, something else real quick. Now let's say I wanna type in, uh, I wanna type in a new filter. I wanna say, um, just an example, so I'm gonna say ABC colon if mm, mail from contains, okay. What is it going to be? ABC at test.com. Okay, then go ahead and take an action of log entry. 
okay, put a log entry saying that, um, you know, email from ABC. And okay, well, that already looks complicated. Okay, close this, close this. And hit enter, hit a dot right here. And you see message filter added, one filters added. Like literally you can type it like this, starting with the name and ending the complete filter, just need a dot on the same, on a different line. Now, if I go ahead and uh, try this out, like let's do a new and let's type it. Let's put a dot and uh, literally that's it. So an error occurred. Uh, filtering this illegal character. I did not understand that. Basically, it was like, what, what the hell is going on? It did not take it as that dot, which ends uh, the message filter. And that's why whenever you go ahead and create a new message filter, it tells you enter a dot on its own line to end. And if you don't do that, it's not going to let you do it. Okay. Okay, this video is already longer than expected. And therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new video after this in which I'm going to explain if um, if else. I'm going to talk about um, not, not just this, but also final actions and um, how they're different from the other actions. But anyways, um, yeah, let's uh, let's do it in the other video. For now, this should be good. And um, if you have any comments or any questions, please put it down in the comments section. I'll be very happy to help as long as I know the answer. You will find me right here. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day. Goodbye.